Hello, I'm Alan Decadene, and welcome to Legends of Motorsport. This week, rare footage of the 1957 German Grand Prix brings Fangio's greatest drive thrillingly alive. The history of road racing worldwide is studded with very few glittering jewels. You know those legendary auto races in which the world's greatest drivers engage in fierce wheel-to-wheel -wheel duels to the finish. Such truly great races are, of course, quite rare. But when the outcome of the Drivers' World Championship and the very course of Grand Prix racing history are at stake, well, they're, of course, even rarer. One such race, arguably the greatest Grand Prix of the entire post-war front-engined era, was the 1957 German Grand Prix, staged on the fantastic 14.2-mile Nürburgring course high in the Eiffel Mountains. Consider it as a three-act play with three main players. First, there's the veteran 46-year-old Argentine, four times world champion, the venerable Juan Manuel Fangio, leading the Maserati team. Now, if he can win this race, he's world champion for an unprecedented fifth time. Standing between him and that goal are our other leading players. Ferrari's two fine English stars, Mike Hawthorne and Pete Collins, both in their mere twenties. Until recently, very little film of this celebrated race was known to exist. What we found is the equivalent of genuine gold dust, the real-life story of the 1957 German Grand Prix recorded in glorious black and white as it actually happened. Schloss Nürburgring, the Eiffel Mountains, Germany. This is August the 4th, 1957. For Formula One racing, an historic day. The Nürburgring race circuit, looping around 14.2 miles of majestic scenery, has been home to the German Grand Prix since 1927. From the start, the pit straight leads into this 180 degrees south curve. This challenging turn provides merely the starter to a feast of more than 170 corners of every imaginable kind, from 150 mile an hour sweepers to 50 mile an hour hairpins. The south curve returns the field past the back of the pits, just here under the balloons that you can see, into the left-handed north curve. Start time approaches. Ferrari's crew walks to the pits. Number eight is Mike Hawthorne's V8 Lancia 801. Horace School's number 19 private Maserati leads Luigi Musso's Ferrari. And Stuart Lewis Evans' Van Wall, Cam's and Maston Gregory's Maserati. And Chief Mechanic Guarino Bertocchi brings up one Fangio's lightweight Maserati 250F. And here's the sister car for Jean Berra. And Gould's 250F again. Four times world champion Juan Melwell Fangio arrives with Baron Hushka von Hanstein of Porsche, who's obviously encouraging him to drive a nice new 356 Cabriolet in full view of the public. Oh, what a wonderful sight. The three works lightweight Maseratis. And here's Hans Hermann, Germany's hope, in his private white Maserati 250F. That's actually a 1956 car he's driving. Maston Gregory pushes his car back as Hans Hermann flies past in practice. Shell and Beira chat together. and Mike Hawthorne, looking forward to his drive. And so the grid forms up for the start. They have 22 laps of hard racing ahead of them, 311 miles. There's a Formula Two race for 1,500cc cars being run concurrently with the two and a half litre Formula One Grand Prix. Umberto Malioli drives car number 20, a factory 1500 Porsche. Carl Kling wishes him luck. Car 21 is Edgar Barth's similar car, a strip Porsche for Formula 2. Fangio is on pole after lapping the resurfaced circuit 16 seconds inside his year-old Lancia Ferrari lap record. This lightweight Maserati is a car he likes very much. And Fangio's French teammate Jean Berra and Peter Collins of Ferrari on the outside of the front row. Ferrari, Maserati, Ferrari. And they're off. 
Mike Hawthorne leads the charge down into the south curve. Followed by Collins, Fangio, Beira, Muzo, Shell, Evans, Gregory, Brooks, Herman, and Roy Salvadori's Formula 2 Cooper following behind. And the stripped out sports Porsches are showing well. The two English driven Lancia Ferraris lead, Fangio's third. They stream along the back straight behind the pits with some late braking into the north curve coming up. And then down through the forest towards Versiphon. It's Hawthorne, Collins, Fangio, Beira. Oh, and Moss's Van Wall. It's being passed by Musso's Ferrari and Harry Shell right up behind with the third lightweight Maserati. Then it's Tony Brooks's Van Wall and Lewis Evans and then Salvador in the leading F2 Cooper. Private Maseratis lead Cooper and Porsche down across the Adenauer Bridge. Australian privateer Paul England's Formula 2 Cooper in pursuit. This is the lowest part of the track. From here, they climb on up to Hoyart. Lap one and it's the carousel. The Ferraris rip through, followed by Fangio. And then Beira. Musso in his Lancer Ferrari, followed by Shell in the lightweight. Then it's the van wall of Brooks, followed by Moss. And then Lewis Evans. Maston Gregory leads Herman, and the Formula 2 Porsches are next. There's Bart and Malioli coming through now. Number 18 is Spaniard Pacagodia's 250F, leading yet more 250Fs. And another Porsche. The race is definitely on. The 1957 German Grand Prix roars on out of the forests and round into the Schwalbenschwanz. Through Dottinger Hoy and along the Hedgeline Strait. Completing lap one, it's Hawthorne, followed by Collins. and Fangio in hot pursuit. Here's Brooks leading Moss in the van walls, but Moss just about to go by him. And in the south curve, it's Hawthorne. And then Collins. And then Fangio, and just look how relaxed he is. Jean Beira. Luigi Musso. And Harry Shell fighting tooth and nail. And Sterling Moss, followed by Tony Brooks, who with Moss had won the British Grand Prix only two weeks before in Van Wall's first big win. Lewis Evans. And then Maston Gregory. Hans Hermann. And here's Englishman Roy Salvadori in his Formula 2 Cooper Climax. And he's leading the class from Edgar Bart's Porsche sports car and the sister car of Umberto Malioli. Really, these Porsche sports cars would be better off in the Targa Florio or the Mille Miglia. And Bruce Halford in his private Maserati 250F. Followed closely by Jack Brabham in the second works Cooper Climax and Giorgio Scarlatti in the fourth string factory Maserati. And Paco Godia. And here's Holland's Count de Beaufort in his private Porsche. Lap two after their siphon. Fangio is closing up on the Ferraris. They are running non-stop, heavy with 50 gallons of fuel. But Fangio's Maserati has started light on half tanks and he knows he must refuel. 
Running hard as they dare, the two English Ferrari drivers hold off Fangio around the swoops and curves and the climbs and falls of this majestic German circuit. Hawthorne and Collins are trying everything they know to keep the maestro at bay, but he's closing little by little, a bit on cornering here, a bit on braking there. Here, they swoop down across the Adenau Bridge, and Peter Collins knows exactly where Fangio is, filling up his rearview mirrors. They turn right here, up the hill towards Hoart. And at the carousel, the Lancia Ferraris run first and second, right in there, Fangio third, Beira fourth. Muzo's Ferrari fifth, and then Harry Schell, the Franco-American, chasing the leaders on lap two. Maston Gregory has Salvadori and his 1500cc Cooper Formula 2 right in his wheel tracks. And then it's Herman's 250F and Bart's Porsche. Horace Gould's Maserati, driven by the burly garage owner from Bristol in England, holds off future triple world champion Jack Brabham's Formula 2 Cooper. Starting lap three, Fangio splits the Ferraris in the south curve. The score tower lights to show he's past Hawthorne. Fangio Maserati number one is in the lead. Here he comes, back towards the pits under the Antonius Bridge. Peter Collins now second, Hawthorne third. Beira's Maserati is also running light. These 250F factory cars will have to stop around half distance, 11 or 12 of these long 14 mile laps. Fangio leads Hawthorne and Collins past the pits, trying his hardest to pull away. He has to make time to have that scheduled pit stop. This is Fangio, perfectly in control of the situation. And he's followed by Hawthorne, Collins, Beira, and Shell looking a bit desperate. And Bertocchi has Fangio's pit signal ready. It reads, six laps, 11 seconds lead over Hawthorne and Collins. So Fangio is building a time cushion to permit a quick refuel without losing too much lead. And look at those movie cameras, no video back then. Beira is the first to pit ending lap 10. This looks unbelievable today, but this is a race stop, 50s style. Bertocchi opens the filler cap. Beira snatches a quick wash. Fresh tars are fitted on great-looking Barani wire wheels. Now, watch that filler cap closely. Beira leaps in, breaks their cap off. Here he is, rejoining ninth with the broken cap refitted. Hey, what about your goggles? Fangio is breaking the lap record to build that vital lead. On lap eight, he'd clocked nine minutes, 30.8 seconds. He's in perfect control here, on his way up to Hoart. He's got a nice lead, but he knows he has to increase it if he's to get that pit stop in. Muzo goes through his third string works Ferrari, trailing a Maserati. And here's the Italian works Porsche driver, Malioli. He's sliding the Formula 2 cast car over the bridge, onto the uphill climb, and then right and away round the bluff at Exmüller. Lap 10 sees another Fangio lap record, nine minutes, 29.5 seconds, and look how he throws it into the carousel. And Hawthorne chases Collins, who's taken second place. Muzo pouring it on. And then Tony Brooks in the bad handling van wall. Fangio's lead has now increased to 28 seconds. But will it be enough? Lap 12 of the Nürburgring, 1957. And Fangio heads his leading lightweight Maserati into the pits. 
Can he rejoin and keep in contact with the non-stop Lancia Ferraris now catching up fast? Bertocchi on the filler. A knockoff hub nut spins back on. But watch that far side mechanic. He's lost the hub nut. Let's see that again. First of all, he takes the hub nut off and removes the worn tar, throwing it away. Then he brings in the fresh wheel and tar, fits it onto the hub, but the hub nut has spun away under the car. Well, we've always known this pit stop was bungled, but this truly historic footage now shows us exactly why it happened. Meanwhile, Hawthorne and Collins storm by into a handsome lead. They've both seen Fangio in the pits and know they've got to put some distance between themselves and him if either of them are to win this Grand Prix. At last, Fangio rejoins. His bungled stop has taken 52 seconds. He's now third, 45 seconds behind the Lancia Ferraris. He knows they've gone by and the adrenaline is rushing. We're about to see what a true maestro could achieve. Fangio is chasing hard. Lap 16, the gap is 33 seconds. Next lap, it's 25.5. Their siphon, Hawthorne and Collins flat out in their powerful Lancia Ferrari V8s. Fangio's still neat, but even faster. First 0.4 off the lap record, then another 3.2 seconds off. On lap 19, Fangio takes another 1.9 off his lap record. The Formula 2 Porsches keep circulating. The Lancia Ferraris round the carousel. Followed closely by Fangio the Hunter. His blood's up. He can't see him yet, but he knows he's close. The gap is 13.5 seconds. Muzo in fourth place. And Moss with the bouncing van wall, fifth. Beira is back up to sixth. And Harry Shell running seventh. And through the south curve, Hunted and Hunter rip away into their 20th lap. Hawthorne, Collins and Fangio now visibly working hard. He's wringing every drop of performance available from his Maserati. At the end of the straight, just short of the pits, oh, it's fantastic. Fangio is right with the two Ferraris. He's lapped in 9 minutes, 17.4. That's 24.2 seconds inside his 56-lap record. And in the south curve, Mike's sliding wide. Collins is in tight, and the old man is third in eating them alive. Behind the pits to the north curve, he's diving down the inside under braking on Collins' inside. He's through. He's through into second place. Yes, here at Versiphon, it's Fangio. Fangio leads across the Adenauer Bridge. The German race marshals wave in homage to one of history's greatest drives. Hawthorne hangs on in second place. And Gregory in the white Maserati has been lapped, whilst Collins has fallen back. Edgar Barth leads the Formula 2 class since Salvadori's Cooper has broken its suspension. These 1600cc Porsches treat the Grand Prix like a 24-hour race. They just run and run. And at the carousel for the last time, the crowds acknowledge the maestro's finest race. But Hawthorne still hasn't given up. He's giving it all he's got. But poor Pete Collins' clutch is frozen. One goggle lens is smashed, so he's settled for third. Fangio takes the flag, winning his 24th and final Grand Prix and the Drivers' World Championship for the fifth time, the fourth in successive years. As he pulls in through the gate at the end of the pits, Mike Hawthorne hatless draws alongside and look at the smile on his face. Look at that reception. Adriana, Fangio's wife, is ready with a kiss and the ecstatic Maserati mechanics with more. They shoulder their champion to the victory dais. The British boys show how to lose with grace. They're delighted for the old boy, as they call him. 
Ugolini kisses Hawthorne, and Collins joins the party. Fangio's greatest drive is history. He's just become world champion driver for the fifth time, a record still unbeaten. The remarkable footage we've just seen remained hidden away in German archive cans for nearly 40 years. Only recently recovered, it stands today as a monument to a time when the finest virtues of amateur sport could still prevail, even at the most professional level of Grand Prix competition. On that August day in 1957, Hawthorne and Collins knew they'd brought out the very best in arguably the greatest racing driver the world has ever seen. As Peter Collins himself put it later that same evening, Mike and I finished first and second in the class for mere mortals. There just wasn't a thing we could do to deny the old boy today. Sadly, true sportsmanship may be an outmoded concept now, but there's little denying the honor and gallantry of a less cynical era. I'm Alan Decadene. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me next time for more Legends of Motorsport.